I got this Ender 3 V2 probably about a year ago and since then I upgraded it multiple times to make this printer as reliable as possible and to get the best print quality. So let's go through the most important upgrades and mods on this Ender 3 V2. As usual when we talk about upgrades and mods, links to all 3D printable parts and additional hardware are in the description box of this video. One of the first upgrades I did to this printer was a new cooling fan cover for the electronics case. On two printers, when printing longer and at higher speeds, I started to get layer shifts and the extruder motor stepper drivers on the mainboard eventually burned through. They simply got too hot. I added better cooling to all of my printers. That's gonna save me the money for a new mainboard in the future. This cover holds an 80mm fan, it also has an area where you can mount a voltage regulator, just in case if your fan is 12V. What is obvious, with this new case cover, the printer frame needs more clearance underneath. And that's why I installed the second upgrade, razor feeds. Even if you don't install a bigger electronics cooling fan, it is highly recommended to raise, specifically the Ender 3v2, with some additional feed. Both the case cooling fan and power supply fan are very close to the table surface and there could be some overheating when you print for longer time or the environment is generally hotter. I already mentioned this in another video, I really don't like these coated glass plates that come with the Ender 3 v 2 I wanted to have a solution that always works with all the materials I'm using and I wasn't really getting the results with the glass plate. I also wanted the same print surface on all of my printers, so I went with PI coated magnetic flex plates on all of my printers. I'm super happy with this solution, prints stick super well during printing and as soon as the printer cools down a little bit, you can pop any print of this plate super easily. On the other hand, with the glass plate, things might stick pretty well, but even after cooling down, sometimes I needed to use force or plates to get things off the build plate. Sometimes I did scratch prints, I've broken a prints this way. For me, this is the only solution that works consistently every single time. I will claim that having a bed leveling probe on a 3D printer is always better than not having one. So even if you perfectly adjust the corner leveling like you always have to do on these printers, it's very likely that somewhere on this print bed the distance is going to be higher or lower. And that's why having a bed leveling probe is always going to be better because these little differences are going to become a make or break for first layer adhesion, especially if you're printing something really large. Whether you choose to get a BL touch, CR touch or an inductive probe like the Pinder probe that's going to work with this metal sheet, all these probes are going to improve this printer and you will get better results. By the way, if you have a bed leveling probe and you're kind of annoyed that probing these 9 or 16 or more points is taking quite a long time before the print starts, I will link another video in the description where I explain the firmware configuration to make this a much faster process. Why would you need a filament sensor on a 3D printer like this? This Ender 3 v 2 If you're printing a lot, you will eventually run into situations where the filament on the spool isn't enough to finish the print. So somewhere during the print, the spool might be empty, so the printer should realize this and pause the print until someone comes to insert new filament. I'm consuming multiple kilograms of filament on this single printer every single week and for me it's a game changer. I wouldn't want to have a printer anymore without a filament runout sensor. There is two kinds of filament runout sensors. The simple ones, like this one here, will tell the printer only whether there is filament in the sensor or not. And these are very cheap to build. I have a video down in the description how to build such a sensor for under a dollar, but you can also buy one. They are very cheap though. The second type of sensor are smart sensors, which will also measure if the filament is actually moving. So if there is filament in the sensor and it's not moving, it will mean you have a nozzle clock or another reason is keeping the filament from coming out of the nozzle. These are more expensive, but if your printer is more likely to cause these kinds of issues, it might be worth it. All Ender printers and most Creality printers have the same hot end style where the PTFE tube goes down to the very end of the cooling block, touching directly the threaded end of the nozzle. That means printing higher temperatures than 230 degrees Celsius is a risk to damage the PTV tube and can cause toxic fumes from the PTV. The other problem with the setup is that it is more prone to clogging issues because there might be a little gap between the PTV and the nozzle and if fluid filaments get in this gap and cools, it might cause a clog. 
This happened to me so many times that I decided that I will swap out this section, the throat, to an all metal version from Slice Engineering where the PTFE ends up in the first few millimeters and all the rest of the pass is all metal. It's also coated on the inside so filament even when it's a little warm won't get stuck. The lower end is tightly screwed against the nozzle in the heating block so there is never going to be a gap. I've also swapped out the nozzle on the NF3V2 for a hardened steel nozzle by Brazil. This is clearly optional but if you're printing more abrasive materials like carbon fiber filament or in general if you're printing 24-7 like I am currently, your printer nozzle inner and outer dimension will hold up so much better and you will get more consistent results over a longer period. I have installed BMG direct drive extruders on this end of 3v2 and other printers as I wanted to get rid of the Bowden extruder system that essentially every ender printer has with the recent exception of the end of 3 s one If you want to print all the types of materials including flexible materials at a reasonably high speed I think there is no way around direct drive. I'm not going in depth about the cooling system and the BMG setup because there is another video about this topic linked down in the description where I'm explaining this whole Hero Me and BMG setup in depth if you're interested. Also 3D printed is this new spool holder that is better for this setup as it's holding the filament spool a bit higher up so there's more clearance for the bigger direct drive and filament sensor and especially with higher prints. And it looks cooler than the original one. These were all the physical upgrades to my Ender 3v2. I also upgraded this printer to Marlin firmware and I'm running this printer from Octoprint which controls the printer and the webcam on this little arm. So watch one of these videos here explaining that setup next and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.